Hello to all. Today we will be going to discuss about the very important terminologies which are associated with the genetics. To study the genetics, you must know about these terminologies to understand the concept of genetics better. The very first terminology is the factor. Factors are units of heredity which is responsible for the inheritance and the appearance of the characters. And these factors were referred to as genes by a scientist whose name was Johansson in the year 1909. But this factor word was used by the Mendel. Right? And there are two types of the factors. One is known as the dominant factor. Another is known as the recessive factor. The dominant factor is represented by the capital letter and recessive factor is represented by the small letter say for a small t and the capital letter is a uh, capital T. Okay, say for if we are talking about the plant height then the allele consists of the tall and the dwarf genes. Okay, so the tall factor is represented by the T and the dwarf factor is represented by the small t. Mendel also said that something was being stably passed down unchanged from the parents to offspring through the gametes over successive generations and he called these things as the factors which were later called as the genes. Okay, And one more thing you must remember that genes are present always in linear fashion on the chromosome. Say for if this is the chromosome, then genes are present on it in linear fashion. And this statement was given by Struthmann. Now have a look on that what are chromosomes. First of all, you must know that what is the literal meaning of this word chromosome. Chromo means colored and soma means body. So chromosomes are colored bodies. And the term chromosome was first of all used by a scientist whose name was Waldier. And these chromosomes are heredity vehicles which are actually carrying the genes which are also called as the heredity units from one generation to another. Okay. Now, locus. We know very well that on the chromosomes what are present? Genes are present. Okay. So, locus, it is a locational point on a chromosome wherein allele is located. Say for there are different alleles capital T small t, capital R small r, capital Y small y. So locus represent the locational point on the chromosome where an allele is located. Say for if this is a homologous chromosome. So this is representing a locus and having the allele T and this point is representing the locus which is having the small t. Okay. <clears throat> now, there are few more terms. One is known as the homozygous condition. Another is known as the heterozygous condition. And one more is the hemizygous condition. Now, homo means same. Zygous means zygote. Hetero means different. Zygous means zygote. And hemi means half. And zygous means the zygote. Now, a zygote is formed by fusion of two gametes. Fusion of two gametes having identical factors is called as a homozygote. Again, I am repeating a zygote which is formed by the fusion of the two gametes having identical factor is called as a homozygote. We know very well a zygote is formed by the fusion of the two gametes. And if they are having the identical factor, it is called as the homozygote. And the organism developed from such a zygote, that is the homozygote, is called as the homozygous condition. Say for a homozygous is represented by capital T, capital T, capital R, capital R, small t, small t, small r, small r. We can also say that a homozygous condition is a condition which consists of similar alleles, which consists of similar alleles okay and if you talk about the heterozygous hetero means different a zygote is formed by fusion of two different types of gametes carrying different factors what you have seen here 
that it was formed by the fusion of two gametes having identical factors. Here it is formed by the fusion of two different types of the gametes carrying different factors and it is called as a heterozygote and the organism which is developed from this zygote is called as a heterozygote say for capital T small t, capital R small r, capital Y small y. Okay, so this is a pair of dissimilar allele. This is a pair of dissimilar allele. Okay, and also remember that these terms homozygous and heterozygous were coined by a scientist known as the Batson. Now, this is condition which is different from the homozygous and the heterozygous and that is known as the hemizygous. In homozygous, we have seen that there was a pair of the similar allele. In heterozygous condition, there was a pair of dissimilar allele. But in hemizygous condition, individual contains only one gene of a pair. Only one gene of a pair. Then the individual is said to be hemizygous. Hemi means half. Means the individual is containing only one gene of a pair of allele okay now say for i have quoted an example here that male individual is always hemizygous male individual is always hemizygous for sex linked genes in drosophila say for in drosophila in male drosophila this is x chromosome and this is y chromosome so say for if the x chromosome is bearing the gene say for if x chromosome is bearing the gene then the Y chromosome, its counterpart Y chromosome is not having the gene. It means it is suggesting that it is a hemizygous condition. I can also say that hemizygous means single allelic condition. Hemizygous means single allelic condition. So what is homozygous? A pair of similar allele. What is heterozygous? A pair of dissimilar allele. And if a pair is not present and only one allelic condition is present, one gene is present, then the condition is called as the hemizygous. So in today's video, we have discussed about the factors and the genes, chromosomes, locus, homozygous, heterozygous and hemizygous. We will be coming soon with few more videos based on genetics. So keep watching my videos. If you want to take the screenshot, you can take.